It's just not the best sound. So guys, a little bit about really getting good at golf is practicing a little harder than you play. So how many of you purposely come in and hit fairway bunker shots? Anybody? Didn't think so. Oh, you do? Good. That's why I told you, you're gonna, you're gonna shoot in the 70s in no time, right? So here's what I've got. I've got an aim stick and I made a groove in the sand. And this is hands down my, fa my favorite practice. Why? Because it's a little harder than hitting off of grass. And you're like, well, Martin, hitting off of grass is really hard. But there's value in this. Now I've got a mild downhill lie. I, I would hit it, I would use a lofted club when I do this. You can still go through your routine, grip it. Obviously, to touch the sand before you hit the balls is a violation of the rules. That groove now presents a ball line, doesn't it? That's a ball line perpendicular to my target line. So this first golf ball, I mean, there's really, I can't really say what I'm aiming at out there. I'll just call it the middle of the range because that doesn't relate to a target out there, but I kind of know where I'm going. And if, you, if I hit a nice shot, it'll be a situation where it's a clean strike followed by a little divot afterward. So we'll see my, my first post-lunch swing here. And so that was a pretty crisp strike. So what do you notice about where my low point was relative to that line, guys? Yeah, it's at and after that line, isn't it? Okay. What's fun about this, this is like Etch-a-Sketch. You hit a few, you rake it up, you put another line down. You hit a few, you rake it up, you put another line down. Also, here's what we can do here. You can have a lot of low point awareness. One of the skills to become a good player, okay, you wanna take on Matt, you have to learn how to have the circle of your swing touch the ground in the right place. So if I took an aim stick and said, okay, there's a, there's a portion of my golf swing, that, that bend right there, there's a vertical relationship, there is a horizontal relationship that inclined you know tilted bend kind of touches at and then slightly after that golf ball doesn't it mm -hmm. so what better way than to come in a situation like this if you have a fairway bunker to practice out of or like and, and the beauty of this too is it's a little slippery you're not standing on something as stable as the grass over there so when you get organized into this shot and you find your measure, it makes it more instinctive to, instinctive to have the club kind of, and I would, you know, get settled into the sand a little bit, move your feet around, and then your mind's eye, you're collecting the ball, letting the club land a little bit after impact. So there's, you know, pretty good two for two. But when I, if I had 20 minutes to practice and the only thing I could do, I would do this, because it's way harder than hitting off a of grass and then you can kind of clean it up and you can do it again. So it's a pretty simple drill to do and I'd recommend it for everybody to do this from time to time. Walk into a bunker with an aim stick. Go ahead and clean things up. All right, get it nice and flat, even use the other side of the rake. This rake was invented by my home pro in Toronto, a guy named Ben Kern, an Accuform rake. His family still gets 50 cents a rake, <clears throat> no joke. Tap the aim stick, create a groove. Now where you put the golf balls is really important. The golf ball's got a hiney, okay? Put the hiney of the golf ball, elevate it over that little valley that's made by the groove. That's how you're gonna be able to touch the ball and touch the sand. Come on over, sweetheart. Since you're not shy, I'm gonna ask you to do it. Yep. Okay? So we'll see how you do. Maybe you miss, maybe you don't, right? So here's what I'd say. Take a couple practice swings to this point in the, on that groove right there for me. Okay, waggle the club, envision the club kind of collecting sand. See how you manage. Great. Now, what? Here's what she did. Fantastic. Okay, she made a swing. She let her eyes look up. She looked down range. Right. Now, when you look and see where the club started to engage the sand, what do we notice? The low point was a little bit behind the ball. Right. Okay. So there's different things that we can do to help that. Mm -hmm. Now just with your intent, let's do another one. Hover the club over the valley of that little groove we made. Now you hold on to the club, don't move, okay? So I wouldn't put the ball way back in your stance, I'd have it more middle, but that's okay. Now as I move this, this club's gonna come down here and kind of gather up some sand. Notice how the face isn't staying square, guys. There's an element of rotation that gathers sand as she lets her eyes look up 
and then she finishes. That right there, if you can be decent at this, you're a baller. You're very good at golf. Now, why not have a litmus test to know, in fact, if we say she started this drill and said, oh, what the hell, I'm gonna do this once a week. I'm gonna do 20 shots out of here. I'm gonna rake it up, I'm gonna put a line down, I'm gonna hit five, I'm gonna hit 20 balls. Maybe she hits two or three crispies the first session. So she's got, you know, 10% success rate. I guarantee you that success rate's gonna climb 10%, 20%. Pretty soon it's like, you know what, I hit three to four or five, you know, four or five out of five out of these pretty crisply. Because grass will seem like you're cheating if you can do this little exercise. Okay, so let's give us another try with that ball. So come on up, take a look where you're going, waggle. In your mind's eye, you know, kind of hear the crisp contact. Imagine what it's like for the rate of closure to remove some sand as you go to a finish. Okay, so here's what I'd say. Come on over here for a second. Now I'd say, okay, she made some full swings, not, not a ton of success. And I'd say, that's fine. So if I put two balls down here, pardon me, just give me a bit more room, there you go. So I'd say, all right, we know that Karen's working on her hands, not letting go of the club, not letting the club get really long. When that last swing, things got really long and you got out of control, fair. So when you get your good hands on there, this again, so I'd come in here, I'd kind of get grounded in the sand a little bit. There's my elevated club rotate, um, waggling. How about this little shot at first? Just a little shot that I hit thin, obviously. I didn't want to hit it into the lip. My divot was too far ahead that time, guys. It was a little too far forward. Okay, it was, too th it was thin, low flight because I touched the ball on the way to the too far ahead of the ball you know so I can try again because if I hit this solidly it'll this is an eight iron it'll fly over that lip that was a little bit bladed with my low point too far ahead you know that was close low point was still a little bit too far ahead but what do you notice what's happened to her and what, what am I doing my low points are a little bit more forward aren't they so elements that can lead to forward low point guys if I made another line here, so if I was hitting balls toward the camera, and this is what I said to Bill, and this is with a lot of you guys, my pelvis is basically sharing the space above this line. When I'm done hitting this shot, there's a little bit of rotation, a little bit of relocation, and when I'm down over here, my booty is pretty much ahead of that line now, isn't it? Right, a lot of club golfers are, they plant themselves, they whack at it, it makes low point tricky because it's hard for them not to hit the sand behind the ball a little bit. And in fairway bunkers, a lot of times you'll go, well, don't I just pick it out of there, Martin? Don't I choke down on the club a little bit and just try to pick it out? I go, yeah, if you're not very good, that's one way of getting it out of the bunker. When you learn how to strike a golf ball nicely, you just hit a golf ball out of a bunker by letting the rate of closure, letting that club come down and hit the ball, brush the sand and continue on swing. Okay, mister, come on over, your turn. I'm looking at you, Bill. <laughs> Bill was, in, in Bill's eyes, he turned around and he was volunteering you, Matt. Come on over, Bill. Well, it doesn't matter which club I have, an eight, or nine. an eight or a nine. Grab a nine if you like, I'll take your eight, or you can just lean it up against the, there you go. Show me, mister, I wanna see it. This is great practice. So there's the ball you're gonna hit. You have a precise location where the rear end of the ball is on that line. Here's where we're hitting it. Our target line is perpendicular to the ball line, agreed? This is the distance? No, you're gonna have your comfortable measure. Here's my comfortable measure, watch. Grip the club and get your arms in front of you a little bit. Great, so now you might wanna back up a bit so that club makes sense to where, where that golf ball is, okay? So I'm gonna ask you, take a look at this. This is ball location, so see where your right foot is? Yep. How about you step out of there? Let me put a couple footprints for you to step into. Okay. And this is generalities, okay? Good, step into those footprints. That's better. Good. Now give, give your arms some structure. Let's see if we can touch the ball and brush the sand and smile at the target, Bill. Target? Your target's perfect, you look great. Your target's where that range picker is right now. Okay, cool, so what did we learn here, guys? How is our low point control? Bad. 
Yes. That was too slow. That's okay. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think with any intent at all, you think if you said that damn Martin, I'm going to get in the bunker and I'm going to show that guy. I'm going to show him how I can swing the weight of a club and let that club kind of touch more in and around where that ball line is. You think you'd get any good? Uh, I'm getting coaching. Okay, you're you nodding. Say, yeah. Hell yeah, you would. Okay, here you go. Right? So I would say that was a good miserable fail. I can say you can only go up from there. Right? Let's swing the club. Let's see if we can touch the ball. Good. Take a look where you're going. Where are you going, pal? I'm Thank going you. That way. Thank you. Look there. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Now you can look at the ball. Okay. So now no ball at all. Set your club right here for me. Put your hands on it. What, my club? Yeah, yeah now put your hands on your booty. Now put your hands on the club. Perfect. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Good. Now let me move you. Ready? Yeah. And look where we're going. Okay, watch again. So I was hitting too early. And look where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say hitting too early uh, a fair amount. And so what am I doing? I'm rotating you, letting your eyes yeah. look up. So guys, I, I, brought, I brought you over here just to show you something that's like painfully obvious, right? I, I want you to get way better at golf. This exercise, simple exercise, one aim stick and a small basket of golf balls. You will suck at this drill when you start. I guarantee you will, right? But with any, any fun over here for 15 minutes once in a while, you will start to figure some interesting things out. Thank you, my man. Put your hands together for Karen and Bill. You will start to figure some things out and we're gonna conclude on this, guys. Okay, we're gonna conclude on this thought. And then you're all welcome to try it a little bit because we're gonna do some bunkers here in a second is that think about this if my swing got a little too inside out where do i tend to land if my swings way too over the top where do i tend to land okay and then you'll start to go oh okay there's sort of a bottom and then maybe you can walk the line a bit and start to see where the bottom of a circle can start to have an exchange with the sand and the ball does this lead to any questions, you guys? No. Uh, so for, oh, so, the, 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 these are for um, uh, if you want to hit it a distance out of the bunker or for hitting on grass. So okay. this is a drill that makes hitting on grass easy because this is miserably difficult. Well, would you do the same thing if it was a fairway bunker? I, I certainly would. I played a funny round of golf in Mirabelle Country Club a long, long time ago when I was trying to get the director of golf job there. I played with some members. I hit it in the fairway bunker on the first four holes. I was four under par. I hit it in the fairway on the next hole. I hit it on the green and missed the putt. And the guy said, you need to hit it in the fairway bunker. You're right, I did, because just because to me, these are just like hitting off grass. Now, it's easier to make a mistake, and I could miss, no question. But if you practice what's more difficult, hitting off grass is, is way easier. So don't just hit golf balls because you got half an hour. Do something harder than what you're presented when you play, and you'll get way better, way faster. You had a question, John? This is related. This, that this, this isn't really a fairway bunker drill. This is just a low point drill. This is a fairway bunker shot, exactly how you'd play it when you played a fairway bunker. Because this, when I hit a ball, if, if I have a decent lie in room, this is just a shot. I'm not trying to pick it. I'm not trying to do anything. I don't play it way back in my stance. I just have to, you know, I have to trust that my swing will bottom out in the right place through training and experience. I hit a shot. Now, not to say some good players don't pick it a bit or however they were taught. I frankly could care less. This is still a golf swing that, you know, will strike a golf ball, brush the sand, and make a ball respond. It, it's a fairway bunker shot, but it's way better training than just hitting off grass. Okay? So, guys, what, what I want to do is we're going to play. It's 1.13. What time do we go, Pro? three o'clock perfect so we're gonna cycle th through some bunker play okay with the group um, we'll holler for you to come on over we'll do a couple at a time right Jim will stay on the range kind of just helping you through your you've been you've been taught enough your, your mind is turned to mush plenty right you've got videos to kind of think about and pour over after the camp 
I do want to introduce a bit of bunker play to each player. We'll do it in small groups. I'll invite you over with, the, with your bunker club sand wedge. Some of you are going to say, well, I have a 58 and I have a 54. Let's just assume we're hitting a basic greenside bunker shot with your, you know, with your most lofted golf club. And if you want to bring a couple over me to discuss it, we can do that, okay? But this is a fantastic drill. If anybody does this drill with any sort of effort, you'll be shocked at how more attuned you get at being a better ball striker. All right, guys? Thank you, Bill. Right?